<laughs> All right, cheers, guys. We're cheers. live here. We're live? Yeah, we're going to pull All that right, shoot. There we go. go. We'll adjust a little bit here. Gotta love it. Awesome. Cheers. We got everyone in the screen. So welcome to the water cooler. If you're tuning in live from across the country, you guys can follow us at the hashtag pound water cooler or uh, including pound ICSF. Right? Yeah, we're at Inman Connect, San Francisco. We got the founder and publisher of Inman oh, News, Brad Inman. Tough get. You know, he's... These events are very exhausting, so thank you for even taking oh, the time. It's an honor to be here with you guys. <laughs> thank yeah. you. you guys are the coolest guys in real estate. <laughs> well, that's what I tell Jimmy, but he doesn't. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to go through and talk to Brad. We've also got some other guests that are co going to come on after we let Brad go. But, you know, a lot of people can't afford to come to Edmond sometimes, yeah. or they just have a scheduling conflict. Mm -hmm. So we thought, you know, what can the people that weren't able to make it learn from, from you? And also, publishing experience. Uh, turn here, you know, a lot of things you've done that maybe mm -hmm. people aren't aware of. So yeah. I'll let Jimmy kick it off, but the hashtag is ICSF for the conference, pound water cooler for our show. Yeah. Please share the link right now. Tell everybody that you're watching live, curator.com slash ICSF. I'm going to tweet the link out while Jimmy gets started, but thanks for watching, guys. Thanks, guys. So cool. Uh, where I want to kick it off, Brad, is, you know I were talking about this before the show, uh, I spent the better part of the last hour going through the Twitter stream, seeing what people were talking about online, and the general consent and consensus is, like, we need to be adding value. We need to be real estate consultants. We need to, uh, you know, talk about the local neighborhood. And what seems to be missing from the conversation is the sales part, right? Are we actually still salespeople anymore? Jimmy, I'm so happy you said that. When I list my house, what do I want? I don't want a consultant. I don't want a technician. I don't want information. I want a salesperson. When I start a company, I hire sales teams. I hope they make 10 times what I'll ever make in cash. Mm -hmm. Create huge value from selling. I want a salesman. So what I love about real estate, this is still a sales-driven industry, and that's okay. Every homeowner that's selling their house wants a salesperson. So I'm not patronizing. I'm just agreeing with your first question. But I always, you know, all the stuff we do here mm -hmm. is to make people better. But at the end of the day, I want someone's closer, whether a presumptuous closer, whatever kind of closer they are. That's yeah. what I want. Well, so on that, on that same note, um, when you think about the skill sets that a modern real estate agent or realtor needs, right, beyond having sales skills like we're talking about yeah. right now, sort of what falls into those categories, would you say? Well, I think it's a, a lot of different things. I like credibility, like mm -hmm. being honorable and being honest and being ethical and people that represent me, I want to be honest with me, my lawyers, my accountants, my, my real estate agents, my bankers, I want them, you know, and that's important. So mm -hmm. I think establishing someone's integrity because if they're out bullshitting or misrepresenting you mm -hmm. or misrepresenting clients, who carries the contingent liability? Yeah, the realtor, but you because you lose the sale mm -hmm. or you lose credibility. So that's the number one thing. And I think we always forget that. So that that's number one. Two, I want someone, let's say if they're selling my house, I, I want someone that's going to be on their game all mm -hmm. the time. And that's technology, that's their network, that's their, again, their credibility in the industry. And if I'm a buyer, like I had right now looking in L, I'm looking in a lot of places. Yeah. I'm going to Istanbul this fall to, to live for a couple months and trying to buy something yeah. there, and that's a wacko. But in LA, I have a really good realtor that yeah. I met on the street. When I was looking at a building, she came by, she had a dog, we started chatting it up, and she represents me, and she's staying engaged with everything. Well, let me actually, actually ask you a question on that, just to interrupt Did you cut me off, Jimmy? I was yes, going to say something <laughs> really profound. Cool. I did. I was, yeah. I was all ready. We have, we have some punchline. Punch I know. Right, I got punchline, yeah. but it's really awesome. Well, yeah. I, wa I want to know, if, when you meet a realtor online, right, or like in person, yeah. like, did you do what the normal consumer does, which is go online and start searching who this person is and, and, and seeing what their sort of digital footprint looks like? or? Do you just, when you feel it, you feel it, you feel it. Yeah. Pretty impulsive. I started a company once that had this analytical process mm -hmm. called Home Game to yeah. find a realtor. And a lot of very anal analytical people use that. It was quite uh -huh. successful. But me personally, I'm ADD. I'm impulsive. I'm like yeah. engaged. I'm doing things. And service providers, I don't go through all that analytical stuff. I, I trust someone and I grab them. And I think a lot of people are like me. Yeah. Well, uh, that dismisses everything we're doing at Real Estate Connect. Well, <laughs> no, it's it's, and I don't think. It, well, I think. The, well, that's why I think it's important to talk about because we hear about technology, but then we hear it's about people, but then we hear consultant, but then we see that the top salespeople are salespeople. Yeah. So I think that's the beauty of Connect is it is where those two. Well, and I, yeah. I think what I believe honestly, it's like you got to have a belt to keep your pants up. You know, you, there's certain things you must do, and to mm -hmm. me, they're obvious. You must do them. And there's a whole nother. I think what Connect's really about is going out into the future and imagining the world. Differently. And that's what I try to look around the bend and the curb and see what's going on that could change the industry 
that you know in our everyday lives we don't think about. That's what we try to do here because mm -hmm. the world's constantly changing. Yeah, like and you mentioned uh, on that same note, but human behavior doesn't change. That's my kind of my point in the last five minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and well, you talked a lot about Uber. Yeah, that's been you know the Uberfication of yeah, real people estate. People are sick of me talking. About it, so. we, well, our audience will will hear you yeah. out. Like. When you talk about creating an Uber-esque experience, yeah. how do you define an a Uber experience yeah. in real estate? On demand. You know, the moment I decide, like that moment on the street in West Hollywood, I said, I think I'm going to look at houses. Mm -hmm. It turned out she was right in front of me. But mm -hmm. if I was like having the same experience online, I want someone really qualified right there, right now. Mm -hmm. I want someone that's ready to rank so I can test them out. I'll make impulsive decisions, but I will do the research to make sure it's not a chucklehead and someone's going to take advantage of me. So I want really good information about that person mm -hmm. from other people that have used that. That's very important. I want a digital experience. I want it streamlined. I want documents that I can sign online on my, my iPhone. I don't want any of the bullshit. I do that everywhere else. Yeah. I want a mortgage lender that's with it on those kind of things. And, you know, the consumer deserves that. What is it with us that we can't figure those problems out? Do, do you think the industry – some respect, and, I, and I, when I say this, I mean, I don't want to get in trouble here, but like, what was MLS Wait, organization? Are we too serious? Are we well, no, like, I, the, it gets too serious. No, I, this is, it's actually like very interesting to me. So, okay. like, you know, I want to yeah. talk about it. Go uh, for it. Uh, You're the host, baby. Now I have to like, like drop a joke in there or something. All right, I'll say, I'll, 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 I'll let you guys say that. Piece of it. No, but I want to. What I want to ask you is, I think from the, the the, are we trying to at least our industry, maybe not even consciously but subconsciously trying to make things more difficult so people are seeing value in what we do. Like yeah. kind of how I hide behind that veil. Justify the fees because Yeah, yeah. if it's super if it's yeah. if it's Uber esque as you described. I don't think it's deliberate. I think it's uh, it's probably again kind of human nature, but mm -hmm. I, I think most of this stuff has just been piled on and piled on and piled on over the years. Regulations, habits, old behaviors and it's hard to unravel that. And yeah. that's where innovators and startups they come in with something really simple like Uber. Look at the cab companies. They should have cleaned up their act a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we all had these screwed up experiences like dirty cabs and, you know, would you pay with cash and, mm -hmm. you know, $10 fees on top of the credit yeah. card swipe and all these rip-offs going on, hailing a cab, yeah. them being nasty to us. I mean, yeah. this was right. Yeah. And so could the cab companies have cleaned up their act? Absolutely. Could the real estate industry right now clean up its act? Absolutely. Yeah. Does it do it? No. Who changes them? Are the kids out here right now that are creating something that's mm -hmm. like brilliant and yeah. really cool? And people go, wow, there's a better way to do this, and then everyone migrates to the better way. And to me, the takeaway there is, like, disruption doesn't happen unless it's deserved. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah. Right? Like, you can't just That's a heady concept, Chris. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, that's a, it's been a long day. No, I like <laughs> yeah, but I, I do think that's the idea. Like, you know, it isn't that things are being disrupted. It's that they were never built the way they should have been yeah. in the first place. Right. So it's really just a reengineering with a digital connected system. Well, and there are also credit to all those legacy systems. I mean, the MLS is a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we're lucky in the U.S. we have it. Another one was this whole idea of shared listings mm -hmm. amongst brokers. Mm -hmm. Cooperation, brilliant. That was very pro-consumer. It's all the other stuff since 1910 that's been added. <laughs> well, you know, it, when, you, when you talk about Uber, I think a story people don't really understand about Uber's history yeah. is the fact that when Uber first started, Right, they had boots on the ground in these cities, and they had people going out to these lots, right, these car lots where the drivers exactly. were, and they were actually selling them, yeah. you know, these, you know, for lack of a better word, like these hipsters from San Francisco yeah. showing up and like these job lots in Atlanta saying, "Hey, check out our application." Yeah. And well, Airbnb, right, yeah. same thing. They were literally like calling people on Craigslist saying, yeah. "Hey, you should use us instead." Mm -hmm. Well, I think we all know that startups and then businesses, it's a customer at a time, and mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's hard work. So here's a good question from yeah. Twitter. Great. So isn't Uber killing the cab companies? Wouldn't what you're describing kill the real estate agent community? I don't think it will, it will not kill the real estate agent, but it will potentially kill, or they better clean up their app, is the big shots that you know are in different rooms than here mm -hmm. and think they can do it like they've always done it, like the cab companies. Yeah. And those are the companies that are at risk. I mm -hmm. think and always will believe that the everyday agent, we need an everyday agent. Yeah. No one's sending me. Maybe Google will send me a car someday that will drive me there. Mm -hmm. But I need the driver. Right. I need an agent. They're not. I, yeah, it's a good I've point. been involved in everything imaginable: startup and real estate, you know, DIY. And I don't judge. I love it all for sale by owner. Yeah. It's fantastic. I'd encourage them. But the reality is, every time I buy and sell a house, I use an agent. Yeah.
nothing like the old fashioned book mm -hmm. and the old fashioned franchise. They yeah. better clean up their act or someone will come in. And well, what I just thought of when you said that is they're not eliminating the person, they're eliminating the problems. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was good. That was my <laughs> statement. No, and I love what I you said. Three sponsors. Like, <laughs> that's okay. like, why is simplicity Thanks. so elusive? And I do, I do think that's uh, the IPA is coming in now. We're really yeah, yeah, exactly. Now we're yeah, yeah we we work into we, it. We, you know? we need, we need and I, I do want people to ask questions yeah. on Twitter. You know, Brad, what I'd like you to talk about, like fifteen. What is this? The seventeenth connect? Or yeah, eight? we had the first one in nineteen ninety six and Sonoma. Tell, tell people, yeah, talk about the first well, connect. There were these people that were doing. Uh, Virtual walkthroughs, this thing that looked like a spaceship. Mm -hmm. uh, there were people that were putting listings on the internet. You know, a few handful of people. Yeah. And there were people that were building these digital transactions. I said, let's pull them all together. We got some faculty from Cal talking about esoteric stuff and Stanford. We went out to the woods of Sonoma. There were 50 people. And this is the entrepreneur in me. We had a really, we were very cold and freezing and talking about all these issues like disintermediation mm -hmm. and stuff. And when we were leaving, a, a, a guy that was there, we were going to the parking lot, and he said, Brad, I think there's a thousand of these people, not just 50, yeah. who are doing this stuff online and the internet. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they'd pay you $500 a piece to come. Mm -hmm. And bingo, I said, let's do that. <laughs> yeah. So six months later, we had Yeah. And it's a, if for anybody that's watching that's never been, you know, they need to come to this event, whether yeah. it's New York or San Francisco. They are different, but mm -hmm. the, the, the takeaway people always say is, like, there's so many smart people here that you yeah. can't help but learn and observe and, you know. Yeah, I think there's – I always say at a conference that I'll go to, if I get one takeaway that can move the needle in my business, you know, some stuff doesn't yeah. apply to you, but if you get that one nugget or that one idea, then yeah. it's worth whatever. Is, is that your advice to – because we, yeah, we were on Twitter feed and people were saying, like, there's too much information. Yeah. I'm overloaded. So is your advice basically just, yeah, don't worry too much about that. Like I love to explore cities and walk around cities. And mm -hmm. when you walk just aimlessly around cities, which I do all the time, um, it's not like everything you pass by is going to turn you on. Like, you know, an ATM machine by Bank of America, but it's coming at me as I walk down the street. It's finding that cool little thing, whether it's meeting a person or finding a shop or seeing mm -hmm. an artist or something. Conferences like that. All this is stuff in coming in. If you could just kind of, let it flow, let it go home. There's yeah. one thing you've heard and it'll change your business. I bet the folks here, at least others, probably learned something at Connect that moved the needle. And mm -hmm. a good conference should do that. Yeah. But our, our idea is pour on the content. Yeah. Well, at the time, it seems like it's a firehose. What does this mean? It's irrelevant to my business. Mm -hmm. But eventually, smart people internalize that and use it. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah cool. Well, uh, And I'm, we also don't tell people what they like to hear. That's what I, that's that's what I think people appreciate mission, it because yeah. you go to a brand conference, it's mm -hmm. brand-centric, yeah. NAR has so many rules. Yeah. Have. I'd rather challenge people than just make them, you know, tell them that they're great. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about that for a moment because... And by the way, all the people that pay me are great. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that are still left right now for the show. Yeah. Um, let's talk about challenges. Have we lost them all? Uh, no. no. I mean, not, not yet. No, we, we, have, we, we have an audience. audience. We have an audience. Uh, no, but I want to talk about the ideas you're hearing right now at this conference that you feel like really need to challenge. Maybe ideas that you hear that people are saying, like maybe the resistance to some of the ideas that are being shared. But I want you to talk about that specifically. Like, what do you feel like in our industry is an, uh, either a belief that we're holding on to that we just need to get rid of? And what, to frame that as well, Gary V, uh, he has a great quote about that. And he says, the quickest way to go out of business is to be romantic about how it used to be. Yeah, no, that's a lot. What I'll tell you the part I hate to hear is um, why the industry can't change. To me, that's, for an entrepreneur, that's a problem that we should solve. You know, regulation in the mortgage business. I get, just, just makes me sick to my stomach. Um, I have a Chase app that I can scan a check using my iPhone. Mm -hmm. I can do all online banking. It works marvelously. You could have millions of dollars in your check account and move money all over the world and instantly, and it works quite well, even though it's a commercial bank. Mm -hmm. So they figured out personal finance and personal banking. Yet in a mortgage, it's complete bullshit. Right. So yeah. Chase Bank and Bank of America can figure out an app that I can move millions of dollars around at any time to invest in companies or whatever I may do. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I have that much. But, um, and some guy buying a $100,000 house in Las Vegas has to go through this laborious, ridiculous process. Now, they'll say, well, that's regulation. That's this, that's that. No, that's bullshit. They figured it out here in personal mm -hmm. banking. They can figure it out in mortgages. So right. that's the opportunity. But I hate when people say, well, it's all yeah. the government. Like, right. People blame the government. It's like, well, overthrow the government. You know, get rid of the right. get rid of these people. Well, the other companies that people blame, Brad, and they're actually companies that launched at Connect. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Zillow, Realtor.com, Trulia, Redfins of the world, and how still, you know, even today, 
agents dislike a lot of those brands. They're still resisting. They well, you know they, why you know, they yeah. they were successful is people set them aside once and didn't do anything. They, there was a vacuum in leadership. Mm -hmm. There was a vacuum in innovation. There was a vacuum in technology, and they stepped in. Now I asked Glenn at Kelman today at Redfin, who's now in 32 markets. I don't know what you all think about what he's doing, but. I like him because he's controversial and he's making headway and he seems to have progress. He understands the end end experience. But at the end I said, okay, dude, you're doing pretty well. How much money did you invest? $100 million. Yeah. Now, Lisa's doing it, killing it too, but I don't think she had $100 million. Right. Mm -hmm. And so this is the, this is where the bar has been, I mean, if someone go raise $100 million in venture capital, yeah. in fact, I bet, Glenn's a smart guy, but I bet Lisa would have spent that better because mm -hmm. she knew more about the average transaction. Mm -hmm. Again. Putting down Glenn, it's just like he was outside the industry, came in, he saw a problem, mm -hmm. did a lot of great stuff, mm -hmm. but $100 million. So people need to understand these people have an incredible amount of money. Yeah. Yeah. When Zillow has a $5 billion valuation, mm -hmm. the paper they can use to invest, paper meaning their equity, yeah. to buy up companies. Today, Zillow bought another company. It puts everybody at a disadvantage in terms of ever thinking again that the world. Before Zillow is going to come back, right? Yeah. Come back. And you see them fighting it, syndication, <laughs> yeah. stopping the list of feeds, and mm -hmm. yeah. And I'll tell you, Zillow guys, I'm totally impressed with. I've known them for years; they're fantastic. But I'm in the ebook business and Amazon, mm -hmm. and when you have a beast like that, mm -hmm. it changes your world. And that's happening. Face it. I mean, let's be real. Right. There's. So you didn't create book to compete with Amazon. You created no, book. My, to, I couldn't. They're my partner, and if they're not your partner. Yeah. But once they're your partner, they drive all of it. They the rules are there. They yeah. can come to meetings and pretend, oh, we want to hear your advice. They don't give a shit. Yeah. They're driving the deal. And and that's where people I think are nice. And this to me is what yeah. connects about be realistic, be honest about it. Zillow's a fierce force. And it's mm -hmm. a good force. They bring mm -hmm. me customers. Amazon brings me customers yeah. to sell ebooks. I'm all for it. But would I ever think for a minute I have leverage over them? Yeah. That would be stupid. Do you think as it comes you're in bigger, like there's an opportunity now because they're becoming Maybe e e despite what they might be trying, the larger you get, the more stock you get. Microsoft is going to allegedly lay off 5,000 people. Yeah. In 1996, when I helped them launch Home Advisor, they were invincible. IBM mm -hmm. was invincible. Let's go through the mm -hmm. list. You know, invincibility. Well, even you know look why? at Realtor.com going from yeah. the number one to the number three. Right? There was a great example: Stuart Wolf, Arrogance, and Hubris. If Zillow gets Hubris and Arrogance, if Trulia, you know, they will be upended. Mm -hmm. So, and innovators will do that. Now, will they be around for a long time? Sure. It took Microsoft a long time, but I think it's Uber scenario. Yeah. By the way, am I being arrogant? <laughs> no. Okay. no, but what's funny is like we what you're saying. So I'm starting a conference business. <laughs> sure. no, but what you're really saying is that we all used to use Blackberries and now we don't. Yeah. And it, it was the status quo. Like 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 yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, I speak in quips. Yeah. yeah. That's that's it. Yeah. So what else, Brad? We're going to let you run. I know you're busy. Well, when I want to con congratulate yeah. you all. What I noticed in the crowd today, I don't know if other people saw this. The next generation's here, mm -hmm. and they're they're at Connect, which I'm so grateful for. Um, and they're doing things differently, and they're operating differently, and they're building businesses differently. And I want to congratulate you two because you're part of that movement to to look at the world. Your lens is different than mine. You know, it's a 30 year difference, and uh, it's fantastic. And that is what needs to happen. You did a great job today, Chris. Thank you. That we want to attract more of those people because you know we need to all move over. My guys, we need to move over. And people that think about the business differently. Yeah, money. and you know, Ben. And I'm in. happy to because I have a new wife, and I want to like travel. Yeah, and do nothing, you so. got you got some money, my friend. You've got some successful ventures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk uh, talk a little bit about some of the other companies that you've advised or you know, curbed. You were curbed is a site we always recommend. Yeah, okay. uh, because it's such a great content yeah. site. Uh, talk a little bit about just content before we let you yeah, go. Yeah, I mean, it's everyone says this, but there's just all these great entrepreneurs up. You know, when I meet them out here, you know the guy that's going to do yeah. well. Um, Curve was, you know, Lockhart Steel and that yeah. gang of kids from New York, and they started out blogging in the East Village, and suddenly we sold the company for a lot of money, and I was lucky enough to be involved early on. Yeah. And I've been involved with a lot of stuff, but it's not me. It's all these other people. Cool. I, in, well, I got one last yeah, question on sure. that note, because this is actually something that really interests me. I think uh, we look for... In real estate, we look really internally what everyone else is doing in our industry. But I think smart entrepreneurs look outside, yeah. right, for inspiration. So when you mentioned Curb and with all the businesses you've run and sold and still maintain, like what's that X factor that you look for with an entrepreneur? Because we see this in, in like Elon Musk is a great example of this, right? Yeah. Starts PayPal, starts yeah. SpaceX, starts Tesla, and like. 
They just seem to get it, right? Yeah. And there's something about them. So that this is my view of the world. There are a few people that win the lottery, right? And there are a few people that are so friggin' brilliant and sometimes lucky. You know, Mark Cuban, smart guy, but got a little lucky. You know, <laughs> he right. sold the stock. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the rest of us, and there's some superstars. And then, um, what's the difference between? Okay, let's all hope we're lucky enough to be Bill Gates mm -hmm. or right. Warren Buffett. Right. You know, maybe someone here will be. And it's good to dream and have that passion. But if you're realistic and have a little bit of self-aware, you go. Well, that's probably not me. But if I'm at the not the A plus, but I'm an A minus or a B plus, mm -hmm. I can still get really fantastically wealthy and make a big contribution to changing the world. The difference between those people that are in that list and the C and the D and the D minus are those people I and I just kind of realize this: those that ask for help. Mm -hmm. That's why I like Keller Williams, the team concept. That's asking for help. I can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys are working together. It's not just Chris. It's not just Jimmy. You're here together doing this. And asking for help, if you think of it when you had downtime in your personal life, you know, you could try to get through it yourself and muddle through it, but if you ask someone for help, you're going to, you know, just sharing it's better. Mm -hmm. Business is the team. It's the people you work with. And if you're down, you're out, ask for help. And that's the difference between getting to A, I think, mm -hmm. from C. The guy that does it alone and thinks he has all the fucking answers. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. That's, that's, a, that's how we roll. <laughs> <laughs> He'll probably be a C, unless he happens to be Bill Gates. Yeah. Not very too many, there aren't too many of those. There are. There are. Yeah. And, I don't mean you spill gates. Yeah. Know, well, well, well even Spencer, you know, the CEO of Zillow, he's <laughs> on record numerous times saying my biggest strength as a CEO is being willing to hire people smarter than me. Look at Rich Barton. Look at Lloyd and those guys. Yeah. They always hired. I mean, I met Rich at Microsoft back in the day, and he came in and said, we're going to do this thing for trouble. You know? Yeah. And... Uh, but they had a team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I was I was standing in Times Square when they went public. Yeah. And I got you know the Nasdaq bell was ringing, and I was standing behind a couple of the co-founders that I didn't really know, and it was just really an amazing moment for them, where they were literally like, "We've only been around for five years." <laughs> like, right. yeah. yeah. But it was amazing, and like they are good people. They're smart people. They want the industry to be better too. Mm -hmm. So you know. Partners versus vendors, which was the Absolutely. last theme at Connect. It's a lot of it is mindset. Yeah, right? you know, one thing I the, I can't think of the guy's name. The real estate broker from Seattle that go, got on the board of Zillow. Yeah, I'm sure someone in your audience knows. Mm -hmm. There's another strategy for a real estate broker. There you, you go. <laughs> yeah. Really successful real estate startup, yeah. and you'll make a lot more from that than you will being a broker. Exactly. No, it's you know it's such awesome advice. Like, yeah. On that note, uh, I was listening to a interview with I think it was uh, Kevin Rose with yeah. the guy from Squarespace. Yeah. Oh, he's and good. He, if you guys don't know Squarespace, you know absolutely follow the story. Kevin Rose, just Google it. Uh, yeah. It's foundation, and uh, he he said this quote that just it reminded me exactly what you said. He said, "I can't code anymore." I can't micromanage anymore. All I can do as a CEO is control who's in the room, right? That's, that's and, I, and I and I just stuck with me because like that's maybe great, great way of putting it. That's just nailed it. Absolutely. All right, well, cool, Brad. Thank you so cool. much for being here. Thank you, guys. Yeah, seriously, thanks yeah. for stopping by. I love you guys. Keep yeah. it up. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. So, so here's this, what we're this gonna, gonna do. Extra music. So yeah. No, we don't have a lot. Give it up for Brad. We got a crowd here. Hold on. We got. Let's let's show the audience. We do have a room. You know, Jeff Lobb, Lisa Archer. By the way. Andrew, you talk about team. Andrew is our third co-founder, <laughs> and like he's yeah. actually the one doing all the work. Oh, he no. is the <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So anyway, we're gonna bring a couple other guys on, Brad. You're welcome to take off. No, no, I'm gonna yeah. get the road. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks, Brad. Brad. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah, once we see some yeah I'll switch over. So. Yeah, Jimmy, you want to roll and I'll finish up? Or you want to switch spots? Yeah, I'll switch spots. The lasso, come on in. Chris, right. Chris got a guy. So one of the one of the coolest things about Inman. Connect is that there are pretty innovative technology companies either starting or under a year old or what's next or what's new. Yeah. And you're with V Flyer. I hand selected a few people to come in and talk about what they're doing because I actually think what they've built is useful versus some of the stuff that you see here that's definitely not going to be around in another year. So you're, uh, I wanted you to just talk about Lasso. Sure thing. It's lasso.net, L-A-S-S-O.net. You guys can go there right now and check it out. But talk about the problem that Lasso is trying to solve for the industry. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, essentially, realtors want to be able to collaborate with their clients, their buying clients. And right now, their clients are used to using Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, or broker or franchise websites. Mm -hmm. And the realtor is trying to sort of force them off of that platform right. mm -hmm. to be able to effectively collaborate. Mm -hmm. And what we said is you don't have to force them off of the places they love to search yeah. and still collaborate. So we've created, Well, I love your analogy because the way he told it on the prep call was like, you don't really get very far if you take toys away from kids. 
And it really is kind of like they have the toy for 16 months, right. and then they meet the agent, and the first thing the agent does is say, well, you can't play with that toy anymore. You have to use my toy. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I totally agree that collaboration is really important. And so what we've done is we've created a Pinterest-like service mm -hmm. where people can bookmark listings wherever they find it, wherever their toys are, mm -hmm. and they just basically bookmark it, and it stores a summary of that information in a client-specific workspace. Mm -hmm. And so from there, whenever the client does things, the agent gets notified. Got it. And yeah. whenever the agent adds listings or adds comments, the client gets notified. Mm -hmm. So it's just really simple to use. Yeah, and for, for those of you that watched it have ever used Evernote, the Evernote Web Clipper, yeah. the Hootsuite plugin. Yeah, good you know, Yeah, it just goes right into Chrome or Firefox. So you're on Zilla, you're on Trulia, but you have a plugin now that will put that into a saved workspace. But it is an agent collaborative yeah. tool. Correct. So even if the listing on Zilla that you save is fee premier agent from somewhere else, Right. Because you empowered the consumer with the lasso, mm -hmm. right. it doesn't matter. You're working together in that space. Correct. I mean, then basically the you know basically the agent is sort of front and center for their client. I mean, that client is already right. their client. Yeah. yeah. So it's like they're not necessarily looking for another agent. Mm -hmm. So it really doesn't matter where they're searching. Yeah, and we, that's what we talked about on the panel. Is like sure. there's a certain level of trust. Like I'm working with Todd. I'm not going to leave Todd. Yeah. So he has no reason to tell me not to use Zillow. You know, because well, I'm the, the, committed to Todd, but yeah. some, you know, we're going to bring Andrew on in a second sure. for Real Scout, sure. because their ideology is a little different. Their ideology is that the reason consumers use those sites is because real estate agents' websites suck, right? <laughs> and MLSs kind of yeah. suck. No, I, I, yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. But the listing portal sites don't suck. Right. They're all very good. Yeah. And so is Real Scout. Well, and well. even yeah. even we'll, we'll talk about Andrew with it too. Yeah. But honestly, it's the same concept. Like Real Scout is a technology company mm -hmm. focused on building a search experience that's great. Right. And most brokers and realtors are not technology companies that don't know how to build any technology. So it could be because they love those sites, but that also could just be you're only as good as your options. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. There's a in a, in a I'm embarrassed to tell a story because I felt like a total creep. But, but like I was at Starbucks this morning and this girl sat in front of me and I, she pulled up her computer right. right and the first site she went to was Trulia.com right. and so like I immediately started watching her right to like yeah. go through and start searching and well, she you know no, okay I'm not answering that question so <laughs> so so she then begins to like immediately go to like four or five other sites Craigslist and Zillow like I'm seeing her go through that experience yeah. like, what was interesting to me about it's like. When Chris was telling me this idea, this is the first time I'm hearing about Lasso. Yeah. Uh, like I, you start to appreciate that the consumer experience is not a very linear one direction. It's a very chaotic. Like check multiple sources, verify. Like they're getting very intelligent about the way they search for properties. So the Absolutely. question I have for you is: Is this any different? Are you just sort of bookmarking URLs, or are you providing some content about the listing or the pages that they're bookmarking? Yes. Yeah, in most cases, we're basically extracting a summary and storing yeah, I'll that show, summary. I'll show it to yeah. the crowd while you okay, cool. it to Jimmy. So, so yeah, we're sort of summarizing the listings, just getting sort of bedrooms, bathrooms, price, and yeah. then link back to the origin website. Mm -hmm. So basically, they want to go back, which they do. They'll go back and they'll click to go to Zillow, Trulia, or yeah. Realtor.com. Okay. And so I think the, the, the key is I want to sh I share is, I mean, I believe in real estate collaboration. I think that... A client wants to know, I mean, this is a big purchase for them, and they want to know where they are in the process, mm -hmm. and they want to get fast, efficient feedback from their agents. Yeah, yeah. And so now, whether they're on the mobile phone, or right. they're out at Starbucks Can sipping coffee, yeah. Yeah. or they're on their desktop or right. laptop. Oh, that's a beautiful app. Yeah. Well, it's kind of what Brad said, on demand, in my hand, when I want it, from where I want it. So uh, explain so that feature to me real quick, the yeah. star feature. They're able to rate that as, as they get in the application. Yeah, it's, it's their own rating for themselves. Yeah. So they can use it however they want. But yeah. then, like we might, we have some agents that says, okay, if you're really, really interested in this, rate it as a number five, right. and that means set up an appointment or yeah. set up a showing for yeah. that listing. You know what was funny? Let me just tell a quick story. So I, I was looking at houses the other day, and what we did was we told our kids, you know, whenever we're done looking at this one, you got to give it a number. You know, you got to tell us one to ten. You know, what'd you think? So we come out of the first house. You know, kids are pretty easy to impress. And the first house, I'm like, Lucas, you know, what do you give this one? 14, Daddy. 14. <laughs> I'm like, damn, we, we, now we can't even see the rest. And then the one I liked was a 9. 
Yeah. I'm still pretty good. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. So I'm like, yeah. So you know, it's like I want to collaborate with my son, but I might just tell him to go play his freaking DS, honestly. You know. Yeah. So anyway, thanks for your time. Thank you, you so much. Everybody for great 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 yeah. Lasso. Yeah. Over. We'll, yeah. we'll tweet it out. Lasso.net. Yeah. Lisa, you're tweeting, right? Jeff. Lasso.net. Cool. It's an iPhone app too. It's beautiful. So Andrew is from Real Scout. RealScout.com. Yep. And you have built what I would call uh, an in-between technology. So it's not the MLS alert way down here. Right. It's not the portal way up here. It's it's almost that step in between that right now kind of doesn't exist. So just you know, we brought you here because we think your shit is cool. So talk <laughs> about a real scout. How can people, you know, why are you building what you're building? Well, it's also in between because of the part of the life cycle that we focus on. Uh, we think that Zillow and Trulia do a good job in capturing new leads, um, but that's from search ready to agent ready. Mm -hmm. When you're agent ready to offer ready, that's a whole other story. There's really no great product that supports that workflow. Mm -hmm. And the last thing an agent wants to do is send their client back to Zillow or back to Real, uh, Trulia, Trulia uh, because they're going to see advertisements for other real estate agents. Mm -hmm. A lot of the data is inaccurate, so it makes it really tough to collaborate around the home search. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where Real Scout comes in. Cool. Well, so give us a use case, right? So if I'm a, if I'm an agent, I sign up for Real Scout. Sure. Right, how do I get my client to get on it, and what sort of the value proposition? Sure. So let's say that you are hosting an open house, and you, and, and somebody walks through the door, and they become a client. They become yeah. a little bit more than a prospect. You talk to them about their wants and needs. Mm -hmm. um, another really cool thing about Real Scout is that you don't just search by bedrooms and bathrooms. You can search by a lot of the wish list items. So you ask the client what's important to them in finding a home. The answer is usually not. 3,600 square feet. It's usually yeah. I have kids. I love to have a backyard, or I, ha I love to live on a cul-de-sac because it's safer. Mm -hmm. And those are all things that you can add to Real Scout and invite them into the search experience. And then together you'd work to find the right home. And what do you, what do you call that feature? Uh, feature search. Yeah, yeah, I love the Jimmy. Yeah. It's sexy. So go to realscout.com <laughs> yeah. and click on feature search so you guys can see what this looks like in real time. And it, it is. It would be hard for an agent to recreate that. How are you guys able to? Put something that says pools go. <laughs> that, that's the question we always get asked. Yeah. Um, and so, and, and, and what Chris is describing here is, uh, is is basically almost like house or Pinterest, where you can say, "Hey, I'm looking for a house with a gourmet kitchen," and you can click on gourmet kitchens and literally see all the photographs of gourmet kitchens in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a really, really sexy feature. Um, and some of that is our secret sauce, but yeah, you know, I can yeah. tell you that we, we tag and categorize properties based off of hundred of hundreds of attributes. Mm -hmm. And if a home, ha if a kitchen has stainless steel appliances or uh, a garden sink, a garden window, you yeah. know, th these different attributes, we can surface yeah. properties that have those. Well, and my question on, on that, though, is, is the data, does it originate? Are you just scraping the web, or are you getting it from... Well, we're yeah. certainly not scraping the web. In, in fact, we, we ignore a lot of that noise, and that's yeah. where uh, some other national portals go wrong, I think. Um, but we get the data directly from the MLS, which is an important distinction, because yeah. it's accurate, and it's updated every 30 minutes. Well, well let me, and actually, on that same note, though, uh, mm -hmm. knowing that agents sometimes... Like exaggerate. just don't. Well, they exaggerate, but they also like can be very, very bare. Like, is sure. there like because obviously we know like agents who are top performing agents, they fill out the information like if they're they're telling a story of the property. Exactly. But then you have a large group of listings, right? That are just just terrible. Yeah. Right? Horrible photos. Yeah. yeah. Like check Emails, out this new listing. Yeah. Exclamation point. Right? Sure. And so that's where Real Scout comes in, is because we add a tremendous amount of metadata to all these listings. And we have uh, you know, many data sources. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have our team uh, that is, is tagging with these photographs. Um, but so a good you're, example, you're beefing up the listing oh, yeah. page regardless well, of let's the say So we're not advocating, like, keep pushing out the shitty listings, because you know, we want people to actually you know, put more information in there. Sure. You guys are but, sort well, of okay, compensating for let's that. Let's take an example. Let's say that you're looking to buy a house in San Francisco, but yeah. you want to be near a Google shuttle stop, because that's how you get to work every day. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any site on the planet besides Real Scout that will allow you to surface properties that have those yeah. wish list items. Yeah. yeah, and and there's a hack for this a little bit, right? So if you have an IDX on your site, yes. and you Polygon. do a search with pools, right? Yeah. And then you get the unique URL that shows results with pools. Yeah. You could put a button on your site that says search for homes with pools. Yeah, but you search won't see for the homes photographs with offices. Of the pools. And that's, that's as the primary photo. Right. Well, yeah. the other part what you're saying too is you're adding additional information on top of what they're getting right. from the MLS based on the mm -hmm. property's address, I'm, I'm guessing. I mean, very, yes. yeah, I mean, we... You don't just disclose your secret sauce. You can say, I'm not answering that question. But no, I get, I get it. That makes a lot of sense. So, the, so you're trying to change your search experience by... Well, here's what they're doing, Jim. You have Zillow, Truly, and Realtor.com that people like and trust. Yeah. You have real estate agent websites, which people hate and don't use. And what they're doing is they're taking a co-branded approach. Yes. So it's a real scout site, 
but it's got a little bit of agent branding too, but it doesn't feel like, oh, now I'm on only KW listings, or yeah. oh, now it's only that agent's listing. Right. It, and it, I mean, you guys have beautiful I, work. I, 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 I sold real estate for seven years, and I, I tried every one of those little terrible IDX widgets that I inserted on my site. Yeah. And the iframes aren't cutting it? No, and, and the clients don't use it. Um, well, the, and the other thing you're doing that I thought was cool is natural language emails. Right. That are automated. So, well, and that comes back to the data we have about these listings and, mm -hmm. and that buyer consultation where you say, uh, you know, Jimmy, what's important to you in owning a home? And you say, oh, you know, I'd love a walk in closet. Yeah. And you add that into a real scout, and now the emails that you get, it says, hey, Jimmy, check out this home. It has a walk in closet. Yeah, um, that's phenomenal. And, 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 the, and, and it's get, really a merge code that says insert feature they want. Right? <laughs> oh, it's a little more complicated than yeah. that. But, no, no, that's it. I mean, we'll think, but even like we're, we're, we're playing around right now with merge codes and subject lines. Yeah. Sure. So that if somebody says, uh, my address is 123 Main Street, give me my value, yeah. right. the first email says, home it value matters, for right. 123 Main in, Street. In, yeah. in, a, in a company like Real Scout, which is venture backed and we're recruiting some of the top talent in the industry today, Inman announced that we recruited. Mm -hmm. um, a VP of product of mobile experience uh, from cool. Realtor.com. Um, we're, we're attracting a lot of the talent in the industry. Uh, we have the resources to make that happen. And that hasn't happened recently, right? Yeah. You have you have uh, non-tech companies that are trying to do this, like, yeah. like like real estate companies. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me ask you a question because because agents right now feel jaded, right? Mm -hmm. They say great service that they work with, right? All of a sudden, takes information and somehow uses it to actually make a profit, and then as a result, they feel like they just sort of gave away the farm. So sure. are you willing to share what your monetization model is? Is it to charge agent directly? It's strictly SaaS. It's, it's software yeah. as a service. Okay. We charge a monthly subscription. Uh, we don't resell listings back to the agents yeah. to advertise on. Um, and and you're, you're only in two markets currently. We're right? in Northern California and Washington State, yeah. um, although we'll be aggressively I, I, I recognize that those tree icons, which are so ridiculous, <laughs> for, their, for Northwest MLS. If any advice for the MLS, it's like stop, <laughs> stop including these stupid icons. It is global. It's, it's terrible. Yeah, well, it's a beautiful that. site, and then you get these stupid trees. Cool. Yeah. So, well, so it's realscout.com. Uh, realscout.com slash Inman. We have a special offer for, uh, for this weekend. Cool. This week. awesome. So realscout.com slash Inman. Check it out. Andrew, thanks for your time. Yeah, what's going on? We appreciate, appreciate it. Great right. stuff. Debbie, thanks. you going to come join me? Okay. Come on over. <laughs> we saved the best for last. <laughs> So we well you you guys know we interview a lot of technology people and thought leaders like Brad, but we also love real estate agents. And Debbie happens to be it's great to meet you, Debbie. The shit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know we've been on two panels now. Uh, I don't. Are you the number one agent at ERA? Can I say that or a change? I know stuff changes, but in you're up there. 2012 and 2013, yeah. I was number two. Yeah. So of of the whole company, not like mm -hmm. in my city, in my office. The, you know, <laughs> yeah. no, like no, the, the actual yeah. number one and. You're, you're doing two things, you know, we talked about it earlier on the panel, two things that I love, and they're very, like, not sexy things, right? Like, it's not the tag. It's, it, one of them is an Excel spreadsheet, right? <laughs> and the other one is, like, leveraging a rehab crew to basically not just help your clients sell the home quicker, but also to, to bring up the value before they put it on the market. So yeah. talk about that. Yeah. Well, first I have to say, I feel like an extinct dinosaur in this room. <laughs> and that I just told my husband, I need to retire right now because I feel like Joe Montana. I need to go out <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm still you like a, like a cheese? No. Uh, this room is like full of brains and power, and I'm like, I don't even know how to tweet. I don't yeah. even know what you're talking yeah, about. But, the, the, but you, you are the, the number two ERA exactly. agent. How could that be? Well, that's, yeah. <laughs> well, we argue about that all the time. Yeah. It's like the top agents don't have blogs. They don't do that bullshit. Oh, you know? my gosh. My website is probably sucks. Yeah. I, can, I mean, I don't even want you to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's decent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm embarrassed, honestly. I mean, really, I am embarrassed. But you know what? Do you really but, but here, care about an Excel yeah. spreadsheet? No, I no do. one uses them, obviously. No, but here's room. but here's the key. Here, here's the key. I love Debbie. Yeah, oh, she's <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have a piece of paper. No, in but, but here, here's, oh, what, paper. here's what Debbie's doing. <laughs> Debbie's number one. You're a long-term thinker. And most agents, they get a listing and they just want to list it and sell it. Maybe stage it, maybe throw some paint on. But you said you've become known as the person that doesn't cut corners with that. 
So talk about that strategy because obviously work, you're, you're telling me you're busier than you can possibly be. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't cut corners, but I don't want to take a lot of time with it. Yeah. I just want to go in. I have a very streamlined process, and I think I'm not afraid to do the work up front. And I think that's what maybe separates me from other people. So I do a lot more work than most people would do, but at the end of the day, um, I don't have to go backwards and mm -hmm. recreate it right. again. Mm -hmm. So, so well, that's, that's it, right? Like we, we hear this all the time when we read business books or we had yeah. any, any other entrepreneurs on. They say, you know, sometimes the, the battle is lost before it even starts. Because if you don't prepare for it properly, then the moment, you know, you've got to actually do something, you're, you, you're all of a sudden always playing defense. Yeah. But what I want you to talk about, because I actually was sitting down with an agent. I can't remember. Stop oh, it, Chris. Don't even say <laughs> All my father's name, Jimmy. Uh, my brother's name, Jimmy. My brother's name, Jimmy. Everybody's name, Jimmy. It's younger than me, except my dad. I got a serious question, Debbie. So it's okay. <laughs> Sorry, Tim. Um, no, I was sitting down with an agent, all right, from New York uh, yesterday, right? Uh, this he got a nine million dollar listing, right? Sold it, and he was telling me the story of um, how he actually was at a two point six million dollar listing, and these buyers came in, and he took the time like you were describing to stage the property, pro property properly. He, you know, did all the little things that really matter, and the homeowners that that came through the property to preview it happened to also own this ridiculously expensive $9 million listing in New York. And they called him up and said, hey, you know, they didn't search him online and said, we saw the property you stayed. We thought you did an amazing job with it. Yeah. Let's talk, right? Yeah, that's so do you how feel, it works. Do you feel exactly. like a, that's it? Like the little, little things, that the quality yeah. really is sort of missing from some of these. Yeah. So my name, when they see my name, they know, any agent, and even a buyer will know when they go into that listing what exactly what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. You know why you're so successful? No. You spent. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, no idea. You spent the last twenty-five years not cutting corners. Correct. In an industry where everybody's freaking lazy. Correct. You know, that and, is the main problem. And, and mm -hmm. I think with that Excel sheet, the point of it is, it's not here's what I do when I list a home. It's here's what I'm going to do for your home. You, you say you've got them all the way down to the penny of what the escrow is going Correct. to be. Yeah. Timing and the penny. So when I go to the appointment the first time, it's one appointment. I have one shot. Mm -hmm. So when I go, I bring it all with me, mm -hmm. except the listing agreement, because we use DocuSign. That's my favorite. That's my best friend in the world besides Market Snapshot. Yeah. But uh, yeah, basically I go to the appointment completely prepared mm -hmm. with market analysis. I, I don't really do buyers much because obviously I can't, don't even know how to use the applications. Right. But uh, yeah, I go with the market analysis. I go with the next sheet. I tell them what it's going to cost and mm -hmm. I go with the timeline that says I'm going to step foot in your property here and I'm mm -hmm. going to give you money here. Yeah. And I don't want to spend more than 60 days with anybody. That's Love it. it. <laughs> And, yeah. and you nail it. I mean, you're mm -hmm. almost 100% list ratio. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Almost. yeah the other, Not the other, always. The yeah. other thing I learned from you that I thought was really smart, you, you've been using Top Producer for a long time. Since I was born. Right. Like In the 80s. Yeah. It was, Before it was, there was an internet. <laughs> Before you were born. <laughs> I was born in 79. Okay, close. Yeah. <laughs> But what, what I love about your approach, let, let's just call it your approach to CRM. I'm going to get you using dot work, by the way. So yeah, thank you. Know, CRM, I thought it was a designation. No, I, 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 I don't have that designation. She's like, don't, I didn't do that one. Don't, don't no, but, write that. But, but, but your approach to database management yes. is that you don't really care if it does 100 things. No, I don't. Right? Right. It does a hundred things, top producer, but that's overwhelming. And most people don't use things like that because they don't know what they're doing and they're trying to do everything that it contains. Mm -hmm. Pick five things, do those, and do them all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and then for Amen. you, you're looking for automation, but you're also looking for quality. Correct. And, and that's where for you, Market Snapshot's a great tool because it is set it and forget it. But it's their home in the middle of the map. It's Correct. not some random newsletter or recipe. Or yeah, it just, it's pertinent to what they want to know. All they care about, really, is how much their house is worth and how much money they're going to get and how much you're going to charge them to do it. That's really all they care about. Yeah. Nothing else. And not true. warm and fuzzy. Obviously, like Alex, no, he's sweet. Him. He brings a plant to people. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm a wench. <laughs> I'm an extinct dinosaur and a wench. Those two things. Yeah. That's what I am. That's what I got out of the conference. <laughs> 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 I I that, that was your aha moment. <laughs> now I need a lemon drop. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's next. We're, we're just, so if anybody's watching that's in San Francisco, we are doing a party at the Dot Loop office after this. You're all welcome to come. 
Google the address, I guess. Yeah. And I'll look it up. But Debbie, thank you. Thank honestly. you, Debbie. We're gonna have you on the show yeah, all the entire hour. Awesome. I love it, Debbie. It's great to meet you. Nice to awesome. be here. Phil, you. come on over, Phil. I'm gonna bring my man Philip on too. Right. And Jeff, I want to bring you on too, dude. So Philip, uh, full disclosure, Philip Lee, he is the co-founder of rentmatch.com. Yes. And I am on, believe it or not, I am on the board <laughs> of advisors. That's right. <laughs> I, no, listen, you know, Phil will tell you, I bring it, man. I bring, no, but, no. but I'm on the board of advisors for Rent Match. And a lot of our agents work, a lot of the audience works rentals. Talk just a little bit about Rent Match, what you're trying to solve. And then also talk about that rental index that you build, because I think people will find that really useful. So one of the problems we're trying to solve is kind of unlocking the, I guess, uh, unquantifiable information that you don't normally see in a listing. So say you move into a place, um, you'll probably go see the listing for a rental and you might see things like the state of rent price, the amenities, the community features. But there's kind of these unknown factors that might change uh, whether or not you decide to move in there. And this is one of the things that I found out firsthand was uh, when my girlfriend moved from DC to Seattle, found a perfect place, perfect price, but after she moved in, um, we found out it was an east-facing unit, mm -hmm. and during the daytime, it gets it's basically a sauna. Yeah. She can't live in there, and she works the night shift, so she has to sleep yeah, during the, the day. Sauna. So mm -hmm. it was the worst place for her. It got so bad that she would actually drive over to my place, which was 20 miles away, mm -hmm. and sleep there mm -hmm. just to avoid the heat. Yeah, And it, those type of things... You know, aren't kind of. Uh, well, then, just, just so you know, we're, we just moved out of our apartment in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and we had a neighbor who was harassing us. Oh, yeah. And uh, I mean, I'm sure that happens quite a, a lot bit. of neighbor complaints. Yeah, yeah. but like, I, I wanted, I want to go back and leave a review that says, "Hey, the building might be good, the price might be good, the location might be mm -hmm. good, but there's a dude on the third floor that's a dick." Yeah, <laughs> like, and that's important when you have two little kids. Yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. you got a wife and you're out of town a lot. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. anyway, so rentmatch.com. Yes. The idea is TripAdvisor for renters. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, which I think that's the the best log line. And then the other thing that we kind of collaboratively kind of came up with this idea was there are so many rental sites out there. You know, yes. there's Craigslist, there's Zillow, there's a form, I mean, I can't name them all like you can, but how, how many did you find there to be? What so you, we're currently tracking about 200, but that's excluding about 500, 600 regional mm -hmm. and city-specific sites. So we're talking about 700 total sites that have rental listings nationwide, mm -hmm. which is a lot. And there's significant overlap. Yeah. Uh, among the top 25 sites, we're talking 80% overlaps. Yeah, you see that with Craigslist a lot, Bill. We yeah. post the same ad over and over again. Well, it, it, what's interesting, too, I, I, I was sitting out with Joe Scott actually in Boston about this, and I went through the rental process recently in February, and it's an awful, horrible process yeah. that everyone, I think, because the information yeah. is worse. Basically, it's like it. regular real estate, but worse. It is. Yeah. It yeah. absolutely is. But he was trying to explain to me that, uh, you know, the, the term, Chris, was a pocket listings, yeah. right? He's trying to explain to me that sometimes landlords are actually like, you, you know, they're actually sharing the information online. Are you finding that to be the case right now in other areas besides San Francisco? No, not really. I, you know, as soon as it's vacant, they put it up because the number one thing that property owners hate is a vacant unit. Yeah. Um, number two being a bad renter, but yeah. <laughs> so, so, Jimmy, here's what they did. They took all these listing sites yeah. and they ranked them from 1 to 100, or mm -hmm. do, you, do you go all the way down to we two, go 230 or whatever it is? Far? For the national ones, you go about one seventy. And what were the what were the metrics that you used to say Zillow's number one, Craigslist number two, Trulia number three? What are the data points that you guys used in the formulas? So the data points we went after were publicly available that anyone could verify, so mm -hmm. that you know is unbiased. So yeah. we went with Alexa for traffic, mm -hmm. and then we went for SEO. So how many links do you have you built to your site? Uh, so we're looking at uh, page authority, yep. domain authority, yep. uh, Moz rank. Mm -hmm. Um, and those are the things we went after. We actually evaluated doing social media metrics, mm -hmm. but we found they weren't reliable in terms of we did a quick How many audit. likes they bought through Fiverr? Yeah, yeah, it looked like some of the yeah. likes and maybe the tweets well, were. Well, and I was going to ask you, because uh, you know, we're hearing about collaboration between uh, consumers and agents. Do you ever see right match evolving to be a collaboration between landlords and, and, and tenants in some capacity? I think... Our site for a review site, I think collaboration in terms of improving customer service. Yeah. Um, 
whether you did a Yelp of a if you're a landlord, you're sort of being well. Yelped. That's the problem because it's very scary for these property managers because the the normal thing to do is give a bad review. Like yes. people, yeah, so the, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's that's very true. The only people that really get write reviews are the people that are angry enough. Yeah, and I'll give you an example. We had one person. We track. We make sure we validate IPs. We had one person post ten review, ten bad reviews oh, that's for one property. You know, our our system filters it just to one review, first review. Was it the same but thing? Were the ten different? Ten. They created. <laughs> they went to our site, created ten different accounts. Yeah. And wrote ten different reviews. Yeah. Yeah. That's how. And there's a lesson there, guys. I think that goes beyond. Well, I think it's the, right? the anger. Is a very powerful motivator. Yes. And yeah. so the best way not to let that happen is not to piss a bunch of people yeah. off. Well, I think the best right. way to actually not to let it happen is what Debbie was just talking about here, which is preparation. If you set the expectations up properly, mm -hmm. yeah. right, and you disclose the things, here's how the thing's going to go, because you've done it a hundred times, mm -hmm. people, like, even if it goes south, they have an anticipation that's going to go south to a certain degree. So, yeah. and, and where can our audience go to see the rental index? Is it right it's, it's right on our, our <coughs> main site at the footer. So go to rentmatch.com, look in the footer, check out the index. It's actually like a living, breathing list. And it was surprising to me mm -hmm. because I have, I think in the last decade, Craigslist was the destination for renters. And based on the unbiased data, Zillow came out ahead well, of like, Craigslist. Cra I'm not saying that that can't. Craigslist reverse. has like done nothing to their site yeah. for, to 10 years. And I get like their philosophy of keeping it simple. The last thing I've seen them integrate is like they have MapView, yep. right? They're, yeah, you know, like that's no, it. but they're working with RentMatch and other companies to actually create mobile experiences for them, as opposed they to they got to do something. Yeah, because I think that honestly, at this point right now, it's like you can kind of hang on to that for a long. Yeah. time. You know what? Yeah. I actually like it. Well, you can like it, but you know, there's, there, I think there's big gaping holes. In, yeah. You know what I mean? It's it, you can innovate and still be simple. Yeah. But you know, every year everyone always does. You know, is I still Craigslist, Craigslist killer? Is this the Craigslist killer, yeah. or is Craigslist still relevant? Right. Yeah. Oodle. No, they're still. Yeah, their traffic right. keeps on growing, yeah. and they're still there. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Later, right? so yeah. All right, Phil. Thanks, right. dude. Hey, no, great stuff, man. We'll see you at the dot loop it's party. Rentmatch. Rentmatch. Come on Rentmatch. Rentmatch. over, baby. Rentmatch.com, Jimmy. Not the dot net. That's good. Not the dot net. We got the dot com. Yeah. So last but not least, we're gonna have. We basically got a minute or two left, Jeff. You've been a guest on the show before. Yes, yeah. We talked. What did we talk about? Drones. <laughs> Which bleeding edge. Yeah, I a little bit too. We talked about drones. We talked about bleeding edge mobile apps. Yeah. But I want. I did want you to plug the technology you talked about at Reboot. Yeah. Because we've talked about retargeting quite a bit <clears throat> on the show. Yeah. Is he okay? Yeah, he's fine. Yeah. Did he cut himself? Yeah, no, no. I, 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 I saw, later? We got a bleeder? I told him to get some beers, and he, he has been gone for 10 minutes. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. it's all good. Oh, yeah. It's all good. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Yeah. Just don't lose your ability to write code. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> we're fucked. Don't, don't bleed on those couches either. We're not paying yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah, we'll. Yeah, we'll. Yeah. So, we're not, curators not paying for that. So we've talked about yes. retargeting in the past. Yeah. Uh, the idea that somebody comes to your site, they don't sign up. We see AdWorks is out there. We do mm -hmm. retargeting at Curator. We're rolling out retargeting for our clients. But you're working as a consultant or? Yeah. Yeah. Consultant. For a company, talked about just the concept because I thought it was really freaking smart. Yeah, it's uh, Fuel Four Fifty One. Um, the concept is um, taking video because mm -hmm. obviously you know we're a visual product. Yeah. So whether it's still photos and they do a Burns effect or it's video, mm -hmm. um, putting it into a properly done ad and banner style, mm -hmm. and then retargeting um, for anybody who visits the site. Mm -hmm. Video concept, and the nice part is is knowing real estate models where you know no one wants to spend upfront monies. They don't want to, you know, do all this upfront cost. They're doing all the setup, no charge. Yeah. They're doing all the no minimums. Yeah. So you could take like fifty bucks at less than a penny of delivery. Yeah. Yeah. It's sick. A penny an impression. A penny an impression. Yeah. A delivery to the actual. Yeah. So yeah. and here's the cool part from a branding perspective, is here I am, small mom and pop, or even just a small brand mm -hmm. in my own market. They come to my site, and all of a sudden now they're on CNN, and here comes my ad yeah. on CNN, or I'm on the, the Weather Channel. Yeah. And here comes no, my ad. It. You can't buy that kind of advertising to no. get them back to come back to that site for less than a penny. See, what I love about this 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 concept of retargeting is if you can figure out a way to drive targeted traffic to a, a site that can be retargeted or yeah. a video that can be retargeted, it, it, it's not that you have to advertise everywhere across the web, 
but yeah. you're everywhere where that person is. Yeah. So you give them the impression, which is important to understand, yeah. that you are everywhere in a really cost-effective model. And that's the hard part to measure is yeah. the impression part because you really can't measure it. You can, you can measure click-throughs and click-backs and all yeah. that. So are you guys on, on, on YouTube as well as part of the display ads there? Is that an area you guys are going to get into? No, and it's not something um, they're venturing into right now. They're yeah. just focused on taking good video content, making something video-ish, delivering yeah. it properly. Yeah. But there, the, the point there, Jimmy, is that you can't go out and say, hey, we do video retargeting, right. and then wait for people to send you their video to use. Right. So yeah. they're the, the same thing we talked about with Homes.com, Redfin, you know, uh, vScreen, yeah. you know, listing videos that are just built for you based on yeah. the photos. And, yeah. you know, you always talk about Animoto. Right. You know, it basically creates an Animoto for you. Beautiful, yeah. yeah. Displays the ad for you. So it's, what is it, Fuel? Fuel451.com. Yeah. Um, See, one, one thing, thing. I, I immediately think about right now, guys, is when you're trying to appease your seller, right? Because the seller wants to know that, are you doing everything to market your, my property, right? And I think one thing you could do is send them directly to that landing page, wherever you have the video. Yeah. And as soon as they go to that landing page, right. they're now seeing their ad. Which, is that a black hat tactic? But that, you know, that, that's a way, I think, to get the word out And you could drive them back to anything. You could actually just, another thing from... From someone that's taking top idea. listings, it's you can take a listing yeah. and just say, I'm going to target that listing. You go on a multi-million dollar listing appointment yeah. and say, I'm going to retarget that listing. You yeah. make the ad that listing. Yeah. So they keep seeing that listing every time they come back, driving it back at them. Yeah. It's like, holy crap, you look that to me, five times. To me, like, this is the new digital cost-effective way to farm. It's yeah. ridiculous, right? it, you know, for a penny or less yeah. mm -hmm. to deliver that. And keep in mind, it's only users that come to the site, so it's not like you're dealing with tons of like paper click. Well, no, listen, like, but we we do the testing. Retargeted ads get what? higher click through rates, lower cost per click, and most of our audience doesn't have enough website traffic to anyway, yeah. where they're going to actually go broke doing retargeting or yeah. something. That's right. right. Oh, well, no, yeah. and, and, there's, and the other part, too, is there's a, there's a post-conversion play here, which I think is important for the audience to understand here, is if you do get a lead right yeah. from retargeting, the fact that they're still seeing your advertisement during that incubation process, which might last six yeah. months or 12 months, I think adds real value to the whole process. Yeah. Well, Lisa sat through a demo with AdWorks today, too, and she was yeah. really impressed with it. So yeah. Fuel 451, AdWorks, you, do you yeah. have a question? That's oh. it. Well, I was going to... Uh, Ask oh, yeah. you just impromptu, yeah. Because Jeff, like every time we see each other, we look at mobile. We look at <laughs> which apps are you using. Can you give one? Uh, you know, it's the water cooler, so our our audience is very savvy. Sure. Can you give one new mobile app that you're loving and using? My favorite new one is Refresh. Yep. We'll so don't use today. that one. <laughs> but Refresh, to me, I love it. They're here at the at the event. Give us a mobile app that our audience may not have heard of. Well. <clears throat> There's, there's a couple that come to mind, but obviously I'm trying to think of, I think the one big challenge um, that comes after the sale, I think most of us have a, a challenge after the sale, mm -hmm. so um, we always tend to send, I know you guys now, but typical audience. We understand what you're saying. <laughs> it's 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 um it's postcards it's it's you know recipes it's yeah, nonsense. There's it's no, BS there's, is what it there's is. There's no value. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's no value. So the value of the site today is give me right. Yeah. Homekeeper.com. Mm -hmm. Homekeeper with a K E P R. So no E and keeper. Homekeeper. Got it. So, so hold on. Say it to me one more homekeeper. time. Homekeeper. Yeah. No E. No E. No E in home or keep. No no. H home. Yeah. Keep. Yeah. Letter R. Oh, I gotcha. So like Flickr style. Like Flickr. Gotcha. Right, right. Yeah. Right. I got it. Right. I got it. That's why I'm looking right. at her. She's gonna know I'm gonna miss it. Got it. So homekeeper. Here's why. It's it's a valuable like you know you sell somebody you're buying a house so it's your largest asset you're gonna yeah. buy most of the time. The problem is after the sale, there's not much you're giving a value. So as an agent, you're giving someone homekeepers, you're giving them stuff that they can follow both from your own audience, yeah. your plumber, your electrician, your this, your that, reminders of getting your air conditioning, your pool set, your this, yeah. and it's branded mm -hmm. for, for the actual you. agent, for you. Yeah. So you're triggering, and some of the things we're talking about is kind of like a, yeah. a thing that I like is I wanted to start actually saying, okay, after someone calls my plumber, yeah. send me a text message. Mm -hmm. So like three months later, five months later, they call my plumber, I get a text on, hey, hey, I just noticed you called the plumbers. Is everything all right? It's yeah. another way to stay valuable in contact yeah. Yeah, at a low cost. And like that. So it's an app, but it's a service. Yeah. yeah. It reminds me a value. little bit of brightness and what they yes. were trying to do. And I forgot the way they used to explain it, but it made a lot of sense. It was basically like, um, you know, it's just reminding you it's time to change the light bulbs. Yeah. Because right. you moved in on this date. Or right. the water heater. Ben maybe. Anderson actually does this in a very <laughs> non app way, which is he sends them like I don't know what, what is it, their their HUD statement or something, right? Right. Before right. taxi. Right, before taxi, right. right. It's so, valuable. Yeah, exactly. Taxi. Right at the moment. He like religiously he sends it every single year to the, to all of his client base and 
that's sort of just a different way of. That's a great tip. Yeah. So, I've, I've got an impromptu for you. Yeah, we're gonna. Uh, you you want to make a first announcement? Unmade yet? Let's do it. Yeah. We got our audience will love first, that. First, Talk to me. Chris loves making announcements. Outside the real estate space. <laughs> okay. You, well, you got younger kids, so yeah. Um, haven't told anybody yet to this day. I was going to announce it in a few minutes. Um, product coming out called Social for Parents. Nice. Um, we're going to deliver social media training for parents to help their teens and preteens yeah. not get their teens in trouble and get them out of trouble. I love well, that. Well, you have six kids? Six kids. Yeah, yeah. six, six kids. kids. Yeah. So listen, now, it's not about my kids, but although I admit on film and on the education, yeah. I'm the first one that could actually have it happen. Well, but we're going outside the real estate space. So say content. it again. What's it called? Social yeah. for, the number four, parents, yeah. <clears> launching next Friday. Cool. Congratulations. Thanks. Well, I think yeah. I think it's insanely. Well, valuable. you know what's funny? So my dad is a, re a retired cop. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And he <laughs> is doing social for teachers because, like, he'll go in and do these things at the high schools, and he'll say, "Hey, so how many of you guys in the last year have you know become friends with any of your students on Facebook?" And all the teachers are like, "I did, I did." And he's like, "Well, you can get fired for it <laughs> because they, they don't know." Wait, the till, wait till you see that. Then we have to talk to your dad. Right, because you know, I mean, we've done. I mean, I this has come from this has come from reality of helping friends. You're right, you can, not like get fired. We've got we've got kids that are losing, um, you know, scholarships. scholarships. Oh, sure. they're, yeah, getting, yeah. they're getting suspended. They're yeah. not walking uh, class. I, and the problem is, is the parents don't know. And I've helped people that have both been attorneys, state troopers, detectives that didn't know their own kids and daughters from age nine to fourteen. We're on, not just talking Instagram. We're talking Snapchat, Ask.fm. Oh, uh, yeah. There was, um, there was a whisper. Yeah, there was, chick, there was you know. an article in Boston uh, Globe recently of this uh, this family who received a settlement, right, for yeah. like like $100,000. And they had this, this this signed some agreement that basically says you can't talk about it. And the daughter's like, boom, just cash a $50,000 check. And like, no. And like, they're like, sorry, we're taking the money back. No. It's like, yeah. So, like, right. yeah. No, it's awesome. Yeah, and, and on that note, <laughs> it's so, like, so, awesome. so, yeah. Not for the family. Yeah. Well, whatever. To so wrap it up. Yes. Uh, it's a great idea. Yesterday at the conference, we Jimmy and I did Q and A. It was awesome. Yeah. We did hundred percent Q and A. We had no deck, no nothing. And this lady, she got up and she said, "Hey, Chris, you know I love social media. I'm starting to figure out Facebook, but my teenage daughter, she's on Snapchat. She's on Vine. She's on Instagram. She, she's telling me Facebook's not cool." She said, "What do I do? What do I need to do about the, all these other ones?" And I said, "Ma'am, you're a business person, not a teenager." And that was like the takeaway. And then I said, your Snapchat strategy, though. <laughs> your, your Snapchat strategy should be to keep your daughter off of Snapchat. Snapchat. <laughs> like, like, that's the game changer if you can pull that they, off. They're, I mean, they've, got, they've got secret accounts. They've yeah. got friends managing accounts well, for them. This, we've got it all yeah, this idea of exploding messages that go away. Oh, you've got oh, whispers. Yeah. Whisper, you've got secret. secret. Yeah. secret. They've got um, high Is there in the room the high secret? Yeah. Yeah. So we're delivering education to the parents. We're making a big movement to cool. teach the parents. And it's not to throw the teens under the bus. Yeah. It's to help them because the teens don't know yet that when that college coach for football sees right. this happen, they're losing oh, their opportunities man. now. Absolutely. Yeah. They don't have that responsibility I'm, of such I'm, powerful media. I'm thankful so, every day that like AIM wasn't really truly a social network because the brain <laughs> isn't fully developed. Right. Could like, you imagine it, what – no, it's off. And everything yeah. we used to say verbally that never went anywhere else, they're just putting it all out there. Oh, no, I know. You know, Ask that FM, all these ones that are just re and are coming yeah. fast and furious every Yeah. So, so social socialforparents.com for launching next Friday. Oh, awesome. First, we didn't talk about it anywhere else at this whole conference. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, we love thanks it. for the exclusive. Yeah, thanks, man. Well, I appreciate all right. it. Awesome. Well, everybody, thank you guys so thanks, much for guys. tuning Cheers. in. Cheers. <laughs> live from ICSF. There you go. Our thanks, live audience. Let's give our live audience some love. We got the crown. Tiffany, one of my favorites. Viewers and water cooler fans, my man Neil, Andrew, our co-founder, Will Hansen, thank you, sir. Will yes. set this up from uh, he got us on a suite. I wish I could show you guys the view; it's really sexy. But thank you guys for watching each and every week. Uh, we love doing the show. We'll be back next week. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Have a great night. Yeah. Have Peace. a great night.